Hey, welcome back to the channel. And as you can tell by the title, this is a new style of video for Bibster. The Bibster Reacts, it's a YouTube thing. But really, it's to talk about something that happened last night, and I think in the tractor world, this could bring some t some changes of things. So yesterday, Almond, no, Almond? yeah, auctions had their um, annual pre-30 sale, which is one of the biggest sales of stuff that's all well you guessed it pre-1930 and there was a case 3060 there that sold for 1.47 million million dollars which is the first antique tractor it's the record world record for the highest sale of an antique tractor it's the first tractor to go over a million dollars um it really broke a ton of records. I forgot they'd said they, they had the last few records and they were some pretty expensive, but nothing quite this record. And I'll put up, there'll be some stuff here that you'll see of it. And there were some other big tractors at that sale, all those all those big prairie, um, they call prairie tractors, which basically means they were the tractors that, the early gas tractors, late steam tractors, that were designed to break up the land for the first time. You know, they were going out there when the land had never been broken up and trying to work the land in and that was their main job was trying to just do big tillage work so they're the ones that really those that prairie tractor generation of stuff the the big cases um the remy's the almond um, taylor's some of the big heart pars um there's a ton of the twin cities there's a ton of different brands that all made tractors back then there were all these big like the big four there was one of those that sold as well um let's see screenshots of all that stuff but basically they also you know they were all a lot of them didn't survive because they were all, some of them were built pre-world war one so they would have been still probably used but definitely by the time world war ii came around and all of the scrap drives in world war ii most of them would have gotten scrapped at that point because at that stage they were probably if they were past their working life um and they were so huge that they were hard to maintain so most of them got scrapped and turned into bombs and ships and eventually pop cans but um well, there wasn't much aluminum but either way most of them haven't survived and in the 50s and the 60s is where you first started to see very a few collectors that were kind of ahead of way ahead of their time to be able to understand that it was important to save some of these and they were able to save them and keep them around and just kind of pass around the last you know 70 80 years until now where you're seeing a lot of collectors like all this stuff a lot of stuff in the pre-30 sale came from one collection of a gentleman who's been collecting since I think they some of them he was buying in the late 80s and early 90s kind of again in that like nothing was really worth there were decent money but you know back then for 10 grand you could have bought some of this stuff and then just hung on to it till now where they're going huge I mean there was three there was quite a few tractors that were over that 400,000 almost half a million dollars and then there was a ton of tractors that were in the six digits I mean just and stuff all ranges of sizes from really small little things um and so what does this mean for the um the collecting world you know as in 20 years are we going to see farmall m's worth thirty thousand dollars or something i i don't think because there's two hundred fifty thousand of them i don't think it's ever going to be that way and by the time those tractors came out they were smaller and there wasn't as many, you know, those past worlds, once you got past World War II, there hasn't been a big drive for scrap like there was during the wartime. So you haven't seen that kind of, you know, basically scrapping everything you could find. Um, so I don't think you'll see that. But I think what you are seeing is the market in the last couple of years has started to increase a lot in those older tractors. And I think what you're seeing is you're seeing some people see that market move and realize, you know, now this case is probably not something that someone bought and thought I can flip this at the next sale or in a couple of years. That's probably the top of the market. But some of these other, you know, two to three hundred thousand dollar tractors are looking at it, going, some some of these might move up. So that's a some so some people are buying them, and I think there's going to be people that yes, they're agriculturally minded, but they are buying them in the thought process of as it's an investment. Where right now there's a few of those tractors where the market hasn't hit on them. I mean, because you could go through that. If you go through that whole auction site, which I'll put a link to that auction in the description, 
there was a lot of running tractors that were in that like forty to fifty thousand dollar range that you could get and play with that in reality and what they could do would be very similar to what that big case could do. The big case was just very few of them. This is probably the best one out there. Um, and there's been talk on the internet the last 24 hours that maybe maybe there was a big corporation, like maybe Case IH stepped in to try and buy it so they could put it back at their headquarters. You know, that wouldn't be something you might see. And so, but there had to be at least two bidders because somebody else is bidding that number up. You know, last week that was sitting at $400,000 and all of a sudden I watched the live stream yesterday and it went for, it was at, started off the live stream at 900 grand. And I didn't think at the time it was going to add another $500,000 to that cost. I mean, you think about what that went up in cost. You could have bought in two of the other highest priced tractors for that price. Um, but I think what you're seeing is there's more, and as these bigger tractors, and you're seeing it with the, the car auctions are doing the same thing. Some of these numbers are getting stupid high. And I think you're seeing people that were automotively minded, but maybe not quote unquote car collectors, seeing where the market's going, seeing how money's going, and seeing that an investment in something like this now might be worth it. I think you are seeing some outside players coming into these markets and making big moves. And I think that's what you might be starting to see in this. You see it, same thing goes on with the Mecham auctions. I mean, some of the bigger tractors there that are going for big money that you're going, you know. So that's that's my thought is that that is what's maybe happening because, I mean, obviously at $1.4 million, yes, corn is $8 a bushel, but everything else is so high. It's not like some farmer's just like, yep, I had a good year last year. Let's buy that. Maybe it was. But I don't think it was that way. So what do you guys think is going on in the collecting market? Do you think that we're going to see something go higher than this? Do you think we're going to see, you know, I mean, what what would happen if, if you guys all know, there's um, a Case 150 completely rebuilt from the ground up steam tractor that's been made. And off of the old prints, do you think that you're going to see guys, instead of spending, because, I mean, at $1.4 million dollars, you could find the prints to what that 3060 was, and you could almost, if you had all, if you had a, all of the things to do, if you had the casting and the machining, that you could do it at your own shop, you could build, you could build that for cheaper. I think you could. I mean, that, that's like I said, if you look at that Case 150, it's a group guys out of uh, South Dakota that had built it. It was all from the ground up. There was none. There was none left. They found the blueprints from it, and they built it from that. So my thought is. Are you going to see a few of those come out? Obviously not sold as originals, but another way to see it. Because my fear, what, what my big fear is, and this is, so I'll let, you know, we'll talk about it in the comments and we'll discuss tonight what we all think. I thought it was a great way to spend a Friday night talking about what we think the market's going to do. But in my opinion, what I worry is that when you go to these big shows like the Half Century of Progress, you go to um, a few of, there's a big, there's big shows in South Dakota and Minnesota where it's these big prairie and these, a lot of these big steam tractors, a lot of these early gas tractors come out and actually go out in the field and play. I mean, it ran tool. We see some of them hook up to the tractor pulling sled. My fear is that as these numbers increase, there's going to be a point where, like this case tractor, this 3060, at $1.4 million, not only is it a huge tractor to move down the road, you're basically insuring it like it's a $1.4 million because that's what your investment is. So then you're, you're going to, you know, whoever buys it is going to, are they really going to want to go take it and go and play with it at the half century of progress? Maybe they will. That'd be awesome. I, I love seeing those big old prairie tractors there. But my worry is as these prices start to get more and more crazy, you're going to see less of those guys going, oh, let's go hook it up to a 13 bottom or 15 bottom or something stupid and put a load on it and pull hard and do something where, because at that point, if something breaks in it, I mean, at $1.4 million, if you break an engine, yeah, you'd have to, I mean, obviously you're not going to, you know, any, you're not going to your tractor catalog and buying parts for it. It's all stuff you have to recast and do all that. I get that, but what's that cost? You know, what's that? The Last year at the half century, there was one of the prairie tractors busted a hitch. You know, what kind of a value is that original hitch? What kind of a value is any of the, if they still have a lot of original parts on them? So are you going to see guys trying to just make a tractor from the ground up so they can go play with it 
and show off what it can do for the next generation because I think that's important to show what where we've come. I mean, it's literally been a hundred and what thirty years since these tractors, the early steam tractors, till now, and where we've come. And I think it's important to show, especially that prairie size of just what how hard that work was. It wasn't just you know popping into an air conditioned cab with a heated seat and hitting the go button on the autopilot and ending up on the other side of the field and whipping 90 and going back. And I know it's more than that. It'll be 180, not 90. Would... Anyway, let's talk about it. What do you all think it means for the market? Do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's dumb that someone's spending that kind of money on a tractor? I think it's kind of cool. I think for our industry, it helps. It shines a light. There's going to be more people. I mean, if you're trying to buy a tractor, it's not good that there's more people looking at tractors as an investment. But when you're somebody that enjoys collecting and enjoys, the more I look at it is the more people that get involved in collecting, the more people that are bringing their expertise into it, you're going to have more people that are going to go, oh, well, I'm going to create this product for this market. And I can see that that market is growing because their numbers are going up. So it's going to help us out all in the end. But that's my opinion. I've been Bibster. Uh, hopefully a video this weekend of working on stuff. It's supposed to be nicer tomorrow. It's raining. That's why the door's closed. We actually lost power today. Not fun. Um, but yeah, tractor show. We're now in the week of the tractor show. So there'll be videos out a bunch. If not, we'll see you guys, uh, Sunday night at about 930 after Rick Bork's premiere was when we go live. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye.